cuts, cut to the chase. Today it's A-level results day. Uh, more young people than ever going to university. Uh, same old, same old. We get the gist. Uh, I'll pick with you, Daniel. University. Is it... Uh, I always worry that it's a bit made too much of a thing. You've got to go to university, kids. Go to university, go to university. And that doesn't wash with me. I think university's got a place if you want to be a brain surgeon, etc. But for everyone else, I would say don't worry about it. Where are you? Well, first I want to say congratulations to all the people, all the young people. Oh, yeah, I forgot that nice bit. Today. Yes, oops, sorry. Because, <laughs> forgot that nice bit. they have all worked hard and okay. uh, and I wish them well and happiness and I hope they got the results that they... Oh, you're so they nice. Got. I'm just but, trying uh, to get to the chase. Yeah, yeah, you get to the chase. The chase is three quick answers. First is, is it worth it in financial terms? Probably the way things are with loans. Very, for some people, very small number of people, yes, the majority of people, it probably isn't worth it as a financial investment. Second thing, is it worth it from a personal development point of view? For many people, the answer is yes, and it makes them a better and more rounded person, but it does depend on the right course, the right atmosphere. And if it's just going to be stuffed with gender, you know, gender stuff and safe spaces the whole time, it probably isn't going to do you a great deal of good. And the third thing is, is it good for the country as a whole? And it is good for the country as a whole that we have an educated workforce. And in general, the more educated, the better. The trouble is, that's good for the country, but it isn't always good for the people involved because they don't always get the jobs that they're qualified for. But it's better for us as a country and economy to have that reserve of educated people we can draw on. That's a bit... You could put, say that's a bit sort of inhumane to talk about it that way. But it is an important point that we have an educated um, population. Kevin? I think uh, Daniel talks a lot of sense... I do know that you can also achieve amazing things in life without a degree. You're a living example of that, and you're very passionate. You can end up on GB News, everybody. Well, there you go. The sky is the limit, right? So you don't have to have it. So GB News is the limit. But uh, very yes, good. Yes, very well done. Good. Yes. Because the man's on fire. Yes, there, right? well done, Daniel. But basically, um, I've seen thousands of CVs over the years as, as an employer and as a business person, and I am much more interested... Um, in the uh, extracurricular other stuff in addition to the grades in the university. I think, as Daniel said, it can be fantastic for your personal development. I went from a South London council estate to be the neighbour at uni of Digby from Eton, right? Wow. And it was joyous. It was a joyous coming together of a non, non-sexual sense in terms of life enriching and understanding your country more. <laughs> but I also have wonderful colleagues in the company, outstanding young women who are apprentices. Mm, and they are yes. the best. Lucy Summers, one, just amazing young people who didn't need to go to you. Let me ask you this, though. As an employer, so you will see a lot of CVs and stuff. Um, do you put a, de a degree requirement on your job uh, specifications? Do you use it as a filtering mechanism when you're looking at applicants or not? I think for many jobs it is listed as a requirement, and but we are also very open. We've we've made some amazing hires, who've, apprentices who've gone on to be high earning, highly successful consultancies, consultants. And I'd have to check actually, is it on every job as a requirement? Yeah, because the reason I ask that is this is one of my bugbears in life because I think what's happened with so many employers, and by the way, I'm not talking about a specialist uh, industry, a brain surgeon, whatever. I'm not talking about. That. I'm talking about more generalist. I think what's happened is that employers just put a degree as standard. Now, they don't even think about it. They say that we want applicants that have got a 2-1 or whatever it is, a FES or whatever that is, and they use it only as a filtering tool. And I think it's so wrong for a few reasons. It pri Primarily, it devalues a degree because if, if everyone's got one of these things, then where's the value in it anyway? It completely excludes uh, people that have got something about them that have taken a different route in life. And... I just think it's very unfair. And I think as an employer, it's a silly thing to do because so many people, they go to university, yes, they've got a 2-1 or whatever, but they're also a little bit gormless. They've not got anything about them. Oh, they're just sat in a yes. classroom. Yes, I mean, I've, I've definitely had a, a, a few former colleagues who would be described like that, for sure. I mean, generally, a high level of literacy, writing skills, cultural... Uh, education awareness can really help in, in, in my industry. But I do agree with you that you do risk missing out on talent if you make that the only um, arbiter of your choices. Yeah, huge talent. And, uh, Daniel, do you think there's a snobbery around uh, things like apprenticeships still or not? 
I think there, to be honest and perfectly frank, there shouldn't be, but I think there is to some extent. And I think it's very, um, it's very sad and unfortunate. Um, and we should work to try and make sure that stops. Now, the new T levels that are now coming through the first time today, because they started two years ago getting results for the first time today, I think should be really driven forward as a means of trying to uh, eliminate that sort of yeah. uh, snobbery because, um, uh, because, you know, there are all sorts of different people with different skills and we need to try and match their, their aptitude and their interests to a decent education for them. Yeah, absolutely. Can I just say something in support of that? Because we did a very big report last week with a number of education organisations, including TeachTap, and it found out that teachers want more assistance in telling kids and students about the potential for apprenticeships. So the evidence is there. But what does that mean? What assistance do you need to well, tell someone about uh, an apprenticeship? Uh, more, more information about what's available um, and more you know, general government policy that encourages it as, and, and can clearly communicates that university is not the only route to success. Yeah, and no, it really isn't. And Daniel was very polite at the start of this topic and he congratulated everyone uh, that's got the results that they wanted today, good results. But I would just add to that and say, actually, if you didn't get your results or if your kid didn't get your results, your grandkid didn't get the results, uh, tell them from me, and I feel this very passionately, not to worry so much. It will feel like the end of the world if you didn't get, I don't know what it is, A pluses, A's, B's, whatever it is that you want. It'll feel like the end of the world. And I assure you, it is not. Uh, there is way more in life than just going to uh, universities and all the rest of it. You can achieve anything. You can have anything, be anything, do anything um, without having to just follow the route that society often dictates that you should. I did an apprenticeship when I was 17, yeah. uh, largely because no one would employ me, really, because I had no qualifications and not a great attitude. But it was the best thing I ever did. Honestly, I owe all of all my career success to that apprenticeship age 17. Wow. I did it with Central Ambulance, if you're interested. Was it a fair comment about your attitude at the time? Oh, my attitude at the time was absolutely appalling. I didn't, but I didn't really even go to school. I couldn't, I, I didn't like authority, didn't like being told what to do, um, didn't sit in the classroom, didn't pay attention. I just wanted to go out and earn some money. Um, and you do, you earn a little bit of money. That's one of the reasons I think there's a snobbery about apprenticeships because you don't, you don't get a great wage. But what I would say is you can take that starting salary uh, and you can propel yourself. I've always out-earned my friends with a degree. Well, you, you have. I mean, you are not, you are not obviously, you are a particular uh, uh, case, Michelle. And, uh, but statistically now, the good news is apprenticeships are increasingly well-paid. Brilliant. And also, uh, to the point, by the way, about just sticking a degree on um, a job ad, if you are an employer, I would urge you all to look at the job ads that you put out there. Do you just put at the bottom of your thing as standard uh, a degree needed? If you do, why? Ask yourself that question, because I assure you, uh, by doing so, you'll be missing out on some marvellous talent, so you will.